Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you this morning as we gather together as God's people. As we come to find strength in the presence of God and to rejoice in the gifts that God has given to us. This morning we're uh, rejoicing knowing that we celebrate the sacrament of baptism in our service in a little while. And so we invite you to prepare to celebrate and rejoice in the wondrous gift of baptism. A reminder to us of God's calling us by name and God placing us together as the family of God. Special welcome to those who are watching at home through Facebook and YouTube. And we thank you for joining us here at Central Parish and we ask God's blessing to be with you as you join us, as we worship together, as we celebrate God's love to us. Uh, please note the announcements, just a few to draw to your attention. Uh, the men's and women's group meet this week. The men's group, Thursday morning, 1030 at Canoe Cove. Women's group, Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock here at Clyde River Church, and all are welcome to attend. Uh, the Presbyterian PEI will be meeting uh, this evening, uh, 7 o'clock, at Zion Church for the induction service of their new ministers, Reverend Allison and Kirk McLeod. And so that happens this evening. Um, also, we'll be honoring our graduates from high school, university, and college. Uh, we're going to be honoring the graduates in Canoe Cove on Sunday, June the 16th and here at Clyde River on Sunday, June the 23rd. So please pass along names so that they can be recognized uh, in our service of worship. Um, the other announcements are there in your bulletin. Please make note of them. Uh, Camp Keir does have a full complement of staff and will be going forward this year. Uh, the dates for Camp Keir are found on their website. I also believe there may be a, a handout or a flyer in the back of the entryway uh, just outlining the dates of when the, and the age groups for Camp Keir for those weeks. So please make note of that. Um, those are the announcements. We'll join together now with our call to worship. <clears throat> Raise a song of joy and gladness before God. We will make music and sing God's praise. Sing aloud to God our strength. We will shout for joy to God who made us. Worship God who makes all things new. We will celebrate God's goodness in prayer and grace. Let's join together now. Let us pray. God of all life, we give you thanks for the gifts that you have given to us each day. You create us in love to enjoy your presence in creation. You made us in your image so that we would find purpose and possibility within our lives. You give to us Sabbath rest to breathe in your grace and peace week by week. You give to us the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, to show us how to share grace and peace with one another. Refresh us in this time of worship together, so that we indeed may leave with a deep sense of well-being at our core, so that indeed we may know of your love and may, we may want and desire to share that love with those around us. Continue to lift us up, continue to strengthen us, and continue to walk with us, both this day and in the days to come. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to join together with our opening hymn, number 465, Baptized in Water, number 465.
sorry, boys. You have a change of plans right now. We're going to have a baptism right now. But you can come down and join us. If you'd like, it's up to you. Uh, we are going to invite Dawit and uh, Rebecca and Ezra forward to share uh, the gift of baptism. And anyone else who wants to come up? Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh, what the, perfect. Excellent. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> you want to check to make sure we're still on the screen there? Hi, everybody. Hi. Yep, you're good. Oh, good. Nice. <laughs> nope. <Two> smiles. <laughs> Here, I'm going to get a smile at you first. <laughs> nope, not even looking. <laughs> you will in a second. <laughs> Baptism is a gift of God given to us by God. With visible signs and words of promise, God's, God moves towards us to claim us as children of the new covenant and members of the household of God. In baptism, God acts to unite us to Christ, to deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to call us into new life of growth and service. In the sacrament of baptism, the church recognizes God's covenant of grace, we receive God's gift with reverent joy and respond in obedience and faith. By the waters of baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit, God claims us and calls each one of us by name. God unites us to Christ in his death and resurrection and grafts us into the body of Christ as members of the church. God washes us clean by forgiving our sins, commissions us to be a royal priesthood with Christ in his ministry to the world empowering us to live in newness of life as the people of the word and invites us to be renewed at the Lord's table until we feast with him in glory. By grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing, but rather it is a gift from God. Who comes to receive the gift of baptism? On behalf of Session, I present Ezra, DeWitt, Gas, Garisu, son of DeWitt, and Rebecca to receive the sacrament of baptism. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Still no smile yet. I ask uh, both you, DeWitt, and you, Rebecca, do you desire that Ezra be baptized? I ask you the following questions of them. Please answer with I do. <laughs> Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, who has been faithful to us in all, all generations, do you turn away from sin, renounce all evil powers in the world which rebel against God, or oppose God's rule of justice and love? Do you renounce the ways of sin which separates you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and his love for you? I do. Do you desire independence of the power of the Holy Spirit to mature as a Christian in the church, to seek the guidance of Christ as you listen for his word, to celebrate his death and life at the table he provides, and to engage in his mission to the world? Do you promise to raise Ezra in the love and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, within the home, within the fellowship of the church, and within the community? I do. Hi. Anything yet? You'll see. <laughs> baptism for us as Presbyterians is a communal event. Our understanding of baptism is that it is us as a community who come beside Ezra to lift him up, to lift the wit and Rebecca up as they care and tend to him. And we are here for them to encourage, to pray for, and to walk with. Therefore, the sacrament of baptism is a communal event one in which we gather together as the people of God. And so I ask each one of you, as representatives of the Church of Jesus Christ, not only here but around the world, to please stand and answer the following question. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to nurture and guide Ezra by word and deed, with love and in prayer, encouraging him to follow the ways of Christ and to be a faithful member of his church. Thank you. You may be seated. 
Let's seek God's presence now as we prepare to share the gift of baptism. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O gracious God, for the gift of your spirit and the sign of water. In the beginning, when your spirit moved over the waters, you gave order and life to planet Earth. By the waters of the flood, you indeed cleansed us and established with Noah and his family a new beginning for all people. In the time of Moses, you led your people out of slavery through the waters of the sea, making covenant with them in a new land. In the fullness of time, you sent to us your Son, Jesus Christ. And indeed, in the water of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized and anointed by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, O God, for the gift that you have given to us through baptism. In Christ's ministry to the world, Jesus offered living water to the woman of Samaria, washed the feet of his disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all nations by water and the Spirit. And now with you and people in all places and times, we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we glorify your name. Gracious God, by the gift of water and the Holy Spirit, you, sank, you sustain all life. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit and by the sign of this water, you cleanse from sin through the death of Jesus Christ those who receive the sacrament. You raise them to new life through his resurrection, and you graft them into his body the truth. Pour out your spirit upon these, your children. And may Ezra indeed have power to do your will, to continue forever as a servant of Christ, sharing, showing, and living the good news, the grace, and the love that is shown to him through Christ. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh. Hey. Hey. Anything yet? <laughs> no. Yeah, we'll see. What do you think? What do you think? You're just not too sure yet. Not one of the best. Ezra, no. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. <laughs> And of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. May he welcome you into his household of faith. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, was it? No, still not. <laughs> we celebrate the gift of baptism. For the baptism reminds us that we are the people of God and we are called to be the people of God together. In baptism, we see what love God has given to us, that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. Ezra, you have now received by Christ, you are now received by Christ's appointment into the Holy Catholic Church. Through baptism, God has made you a member of the household of God to share with Christ in the priesthood of all believers. Remember your baptism and give thanks. Be one with us in the church. Congratulations. Look 
what it is. There's a look of puzzlement on your faces. Let's open it up, shall we? No. <laughs> Come on. I'm still not 100% sure it's a little concerned. It's slimy. It is slimy. It's something what? It's something from the city that's slimy. It is something from the city that's slimy. Is it? Was it ever alive? Oh, it is. Oh, oh good. It is alive. <laughs> it what? It was getting big. Was it growing? Is it a pet? Are you going to take it home? No. <laughs> it's going to become a country. Whatever this is. I don't want to guess what this is. A slug. That's a big slug. Isn't it? Looks a little nervous. What? No, it has no shells, so it's probably some type of shell. Alex is a little concerned. He's? Oh, yes. He has a head. What? He's in the mud? He has a head. That's always good. It's always good to have a head. So, what do we do with this. <laughs> you put it back in the wine. Why? Because that's where it belongs. Ah, huh, because that's where it belongs. You don't think he wants to take this home and put it in his bedroom? No. no. Are you sure? No. You, you don't want this as a pet? No. You're not sure. I know. Why would you not want a slug as a pet? Because it's disgusting. Because it's disgusting. <laughs> It gets slime all over your stuff. What else? Can you take your slug for a walk? No. No? Yeah. What? Could you uh, <coughs> could you take your slug to school? No. no. Oh, I think you could. No. Would your teachers no. appreciate it? No. Your teacher would appreciate it? No. Well, probably not. Slugs aren't usually pets, are they? No. And they're slimy. And a lot of times, what do we do with slugs? We leave them outside. Why? Because what? They're not meant for the indoors. They're designed by God for a certain reason, and they're designed to live in certain places. They have a purpose. Do you think everything has a purpose? No. Well, the answer for this one is yes. Everything does have a purpose. And that's the great thing. If God has a purpose for this slug, have we named the slug? What's the slug's name? Jerry? Jerry the slug. Would you like? We're going to name him Jerry the slug. Yeah, okay. We'll go with Jerry. What? Yeah, we'll go with Jerry the slug. Jerry the slug. Now, Jerry the slug has a purpose. God has given to Jerry a purpose. And if God has given Jerry the slug a purpose... Do you think he gives us a purpose as well? Yes. He does. And our purpose is to do what? Praise. To what? Praise. To praise who? God. To praise God. Our purpose is to praise God. And we're called to praise God, to worship God, and to serve God no matter where we go. And that's the great thing, is that we are given a purpose. And the purpose is the same for all of us. And it doesn't matter how young or how old we are, our purpose is the same. We're called to praise God. Now, we may do it in different ways. We may do it in different uh, styles, but we're called to do it. And we do it all over the world. It doesn't matter where we're from. It doesn't matter which part of the country we're from, which part of the world we're from. We're all called to praise God. Now, do you want to guess where Ezra's grandparents live. Any guesses? It's in a country far away from here. It's in Ethiopia. That's right. Now that's far, far away. But it's a reminder to us as we have celebrate Ezra's baptism that the Church of Christ is all over the world. And the purpose for us is to praise God. And that's one thing. We're connected through our praise of God, through our love of God, 
from, with people all over the world. And just like this slug has a purpose, you and I have a purpose, and that purpose is to do our very best in worshiping God. Now, this slug is going to go back out to the wild, I'm guessing, very quickly. Yeah, there we go. But our purpose is to go into the where. Where are we called to go? The where. We're called to go into the world to share and show the good news of Christ and to share God's love. And we do it with a purpose and a sense of excitement and joy, knowing that God has called us together. I'm going to say Yeah. So let's have a moment of prayer. I'm going to get you to repeat after me. <laughs> Loving God, we thank you for giving everything a purpose and a place in your creation. Help us to find our purpose and our place as we praise you, as we celebrate you, and as we glorify you. May we go and show your love to those around us. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, next week, I need your man who looks like he's in prayer that he wants it. So there you go. Next week, I need something that, no, I'm not slimy, something that either explodes yeah. Or something that stinks. Yeah, stinks or explodes. Your choice next week. All right? You can head downstairs for Sunday school. Here, here. Hi, Jerry. Put it up by your house. That'd be great. Yes. <laughs>
We're now going to prepare to share God's Word together. And as we prepare to hear His Word, let's turn in prayer. Let us pray. God of Word, God of Wisdom, God of Knowledge, you teach us ways that lead to healing and hope. Send your Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds to your word and wisdom to us today so that we indeed may know your healing and live in hope. Guide us as only you can through the loving presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our response of reading this morning is taken from Psalm 139. Psalm 139 will read responsibly verses 1 to 6. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know my sin and my rights. You receive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. You hem me in behind and before. You laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Our next portion of scripture is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 3, reading verses 1 through 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I didn't call Go back and lie down. So he went back and laid down. Again the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as he did all the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Amen. And may the word of God speak to us today as we share it together and as we rejoice in the power of God's word. We're going to join together now as we sing, sing hymn number 123, At the Cross. And we'll sing verses 1, 4, and 5. 3, 2, 3. 1, 3, 2, 3. three. One, what? Three. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it, it's up there. Follow along. We'll be good. Three, two, three, you say? Okay, good. I'll believe you. Three, two, three. At the cross. Am I right in saying verses one, four, and five? One, two. He's got one, two, five. I don't know. Just sing what's up here. That's <laughs> really what we're going to do. There we go. All right. Let's join together. You don't have to watch up here. Just sing what's there. <laughs> Thank you. 
This morning, we're looking for a few minutes at a portion of Scripture from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Last week, we looked at uh, the call of Isaiah and Jesus' discuss, discussion with Nicodemus and how both of them were called in various ways, in different ways, but in ways that reminded us that God calls. This morning, we're going to continue that discussion around the idea or the understanding of God calling us. And today we're looking at God's call to Samuel. But this is a, a call we're looking at in a slightly different way. Because in this call, we're going to look at something that is very important for us as followers of Christ. Not only when it comes to our call, but in every aspect of who we are as Christians. And that is our ability to listen. Our ability to hear. Now a lot of times we look or we hear uh, and we think that listening is simply what we do with our ears. Listening is something we do with our ears. And that's true. Listening is a lot to do with our ears. We pick up on the tones of people who are talking. We can pick up whether those tones are a little higher or they're speaking more quickly or they're speaking with more animation. And in doing so, we realize that what they're talking about is clearly something that's important to them or that something's going on in their lives or around them to make them speak so excitedly with so much emphasis. Conversely, we've all heard people who talk like this. And it doesn't matter what is happening in their lives. Their words are flat and monotone. There is that sense of, there's no sense of urgency with them. There's no sense of wanting to impart a message. And it becomes very hard for us to listen to them. Because what they're saying just doesn't seem to register. The reality is, though, listening is more than just our ears. Listening is about a lot of things. When I was in Borden, uh, one of the courses we had to take was on what is called active listening. It was part of our counseling course that we had to do up there. And it was a refresher for many of us, but a good refresher to remind us that listening is not simply something we simply do with our ears. There's so much more to listen. Because we can listen with our eyes. We can listen with our eyes because we can watch how people react in our discussions with them. We can watch to see what body language they're sharing, their facial expression. All of that helps us to listen and to understand where they are and what's going on with them. Our eyes also allow us to maintain eye contact. So that we can look at them, so that they can know that we are listening, that they have our full attention, that what they are saying is important to us. Just don't stand there and stare repeatedly at them for a long time, because then it gets a little awkward. I'm staring at you, Al. <laughs> but then there's more to it than that. You hear, you see. But your mind also plays a role in listening because our minds have to be actually engaged to what is being said. Our minds need to be engaged with what the other person is saying. All too often, we're already jumping ahead. Somebody is talking to us about an issue or a situation or a problem, and we're already jumping ahead to try to solve it for them. To say, well, I've been in that situation. I know what you're going through. This is what you need to do. 
instead of listening, allowing your mind to hear what is being said. And finally, we listen with our hearts because our hearts provide us with the empathy we need to put ourselves in the place of that individual, to understand what they're going through, the difficulty that they are facing. Listening is a skill. And it's an important one for us as Christians to learn, to hone, and to continually learn about. Because listening is an effective way to share and show the good news of Christ. Time and again throughout Scripture, we see the importance of listening, especially when God calls. And that's what we see in this portion of Scripture in Samuel. God calling Samuel. Not once, not twice, not three times, but four times God called Samuel by name. If Lisa called me four times by name, you're right, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> But what's interesting here in this portion of scripture is that Samuel didn't get in trouble. But God continued to call Samuel until he responded. It's a reminder that when God has something in mind for us, he will call us continually until we answer. The other thing we need to realize from this portion of scripture and it's something we often skip by, is that it tells us that Samuel didn't yet know God. Samuel worked in the temple, Samuel helped Eli the high priest, and yet Samuel didn't yet know God. So it shouldn't surprise us that he didn't expect God to come. It shouldn't surprise us that Samuel didn't realize it was God calling. But what we need to remember as the church, what we need to remember as the people of God, is that God chooses who God calls. And sometimes God chooses the people we at least expect. Time and again in Scripture, from the beginning of the Old Testament to the very end of the New Testament, God calls his people. God calls them. And he calls a wide assortment of people. And what's fascinating is that most of them would be people we would never have expected God to call or to use. But he used them because they listened. God used them because they listened. They heard. And they allowed God to move. We need to allow God to do that today. We need to make sure we are not a stumbling block to someone hearing God's voice to them and to us. Eli was telling, he was telling Samuel to go back to bed. It wasn't me calling. The first time it might have been okay, but the second time, the third time, you would have thought Eli would have been upset. You would have thought Samuel would have been upset because clearly somebody was calling him by name. It's never good to be woken up in the middle of the night. Once is bad enough, but to be woken up three times, four times, <coughs> is not the recipe for a good night's sleep. But beware. Be aware that God's call can and will come at any place, at any time. It's not necessarily going to come at a place or a time where we expect it to. God's call can happen anytime, 
to anyone, anywhere. And that anyone includes all of us. That anyone includes each of us. So don't be surprised when God calls you by name. Notice I didn't say if God calls you by name, but rather when God calls you by name. The question is, are you going to listen? Are you going to hear? Because what God did to Samuel is what he also does to us. He repeats himself. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. He made sure he got Samuel's attention. And time and again in Scripture, we see God speaking to his people, not once, not twice, but over and over again so that they get the message, so that they understand. It happens in our house all the time. Lisa will speak to me once, twice, and then usually she wants me to tell her what she said to make sure that I was listening to her. Sometimes I pass that test, sometimes I don't. But it's a reminder to us that it's so important to listen, to push aside everything else and to focus on what is being said. And when God is the one speaking to us, then we had better make sure everything we have is focused on what God is saying. Our head, our heart, our ears, and our eyes. Because God speaks. And we need to be willing to listen. God speaks to us through his word, through prayer. God speaks to us through each other. And God reminds us that we should not discount anyone in any situation as someone who cannot speak to us and share with us God's message. Samuel was a young boy, and yet God spoke to him. Today we celebrate the gift of baptism and we celebrate Ezra's baptism and we come with the knowledge that sometime, somewhere, God is going to speak to Ezra. That's why it's so important for us as a community to continue to lift Ezra up in prayer, to continue to walk with him, to be with Dawit and with Rebecca to encourage them as a family because God will use Ezra. God will call Ezra. Somewhere, someplace, sometime for God's glory. And I want to see what that is. I want to see where and how God is going to use Ezra. I want to see how and when God is going to use each one of you. It may be in small ways, it may be in large ways, but God will use us. But it starts with us listening. It starts with us listening to what God is saying and experiencing what God is doing in our midst. Samuel listened. And God spoke. And Samuel's life was forever changed. That's the power of God's call for us. It's the power of being part of God's people. Of being part of the family of God. Let's join together. Let us pray. Loving God, we know that you speak to us. It doesn't matter where we are in the world. It doesn't matter our standing in the world. It doesn't matter our age. It doesn't matter our gender. It Nothing matters when you decide to speak, when you decide to share with your people. Time and again in Scripture, we see and are astounded by the people that you use, people we never would have thought of, 
people who in that place and that time were seen as less than. People who were overlooked. And yet you gave to them the possibility and the promise and the power of sharing good news, of sharing hope, of sharing your love. Gracious God, challenge us to listen. To find time in the busyness of our lives to be still and hear your voice. We thank you, O oh God, that you are in our midst, that your spirit continually moves amongst us and surrounds us with your love. Gracious God, give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to hear. Give us a mind to hear and give us a heart to hear. so that we will listen with all our being and we will put everything we have into not only hearing but doing what you call us to do. We thank you, O oh God, that in baptism we celebrate the breadth of your church. We are reminded today that your church is far more than our community of faith. It's far more than brothers and sisters in this country or on this continent. We celebrate with brothers and sisters across the globe, proclaiming, living, and praising you. We thank you for that reminder. We thank you for that word to us today. And we ask, O oh God, that you will move in our midst and you will continually remind us and nudge us to move from places where we feel safe, places where we feel content, to places that you call us to go, places that will move us to the margins, places that will take us to those situations where we may feel a little uncomfortable and yet where we know we need to be. Gracious God, we thank you for the work of your church, and we think especially of our denomination today as we gather for our General Assembly, as Presbyterians gather from across the country to do the work of your church. May your Holy Spirit be in their midst. May they hear your voice. May they honor your call. And may they proclaim the truth that is found in Christ and Christ alone. Continue, O oh God, to walk with us as we continue to walk with you. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we're going to join together with the doxology as we uh, present our offerings to God. We're going to invite you to stand together as we sing our doxology of the right. Bless the ministries of our congregation and of the Presbyterian Church in Canada in these times. Surprise us by what you accomplish through us as we sow seeds of generosity in the gifts that we bring. We thank you that we can give our all to you in ways both great and small that you will do wondrous things with. We thank you for those who have given. We thank you for the gifts you have given to us. And we thank you for the sacrament of baptism, which reminds us that we are part of your family. Abide with us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to conclude our service this morning. We're going to sing hymn number 348. 
My Savior's Love, verses 1, 4, and 5. Number 3, 4, 8. Son and Holy Spirit, proclaiming that truth both now and forevermore. <clears throat> 